Revelation 20. This is a short chapter, but there is a lot happening. We're going to imprison Satan, release Satan, meet two guys with the craziest names ever, kill them, then go after Satan again. And remember, this is heaven. This also seems like a good time to go over the basics of end times theology. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a giant chain. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. So we seized Satan, the dragon snake, and locked him up for a thousand years. But after that, we'll let him out for a bit? Because what could possibly go wrong? I can't believe the parole board agreed to that. Why are we letting him go free? For what reason? We're not told. I guess the writers just needed the plot to move forward. And why was Satan... Yeah, I guess I just needed the... Or, uh, I'm sorry. I guess they just needed... What do you say here? Why are we letting him go free? We? For what reason? We're not told. I guess the writers just needed the plot to move forward. I guess the writers just needed the plot to move forward. Alright, so who are the writers? And why is he making fun and scoffing about the writers. Well, consider that God is the writer. He is the writer. He is the one that wrote the very first scripture of the Bible. Exodus 31, written with the finger of God. God is the writer. He used his own finger. Okay. And now consider also that the Word of God is from God. All right. Thy word is settled Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So this guy's making fun of God. Now listen to what he says. To that. Why are we letting him go free? For what reason? We're not told. I guess the writers just needed the plot to move forward. And why? I guess the writers just needed to, like God don't know what he's talking about, right? Like, God don't know. He just making it up as he goes. Like God, he don't know. Because, clearly, this guy does not understand anything. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, for shall the work say of him that made it, he may be not, or shall this thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. Isn't that exactly what this guy's doing? He's making the claim that God has no understanding. Right? That. Why are we letting him go free? For what reason? We're not told. I guess the writers just needed the plot to move forward. And Shall the thing framed save him that framed it he had no understanding this is the thing framed and he's saying that the frame or the the him that framed it had no understanding okay interesting it's interesting to me it's pretty obvious this guy has no understanding yet he's gonna teach us something he doesn't know anything you gotta know something in order to teach something 
All right, so the question is, though, I mean, it is a good question to say, well, why was, or why will Satan be loosed? Why was Satan bound in the first place? And what's all that mean? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, it's pretty simple. It should be obvious. If you are born of the Spirit of God, it should be pretty clear. Pretty simple. It really should be. Because you know the Bible, right? You know what the Bible says. Alright. You know what it says. You know Genesis 2, Revelation. And... You've let no man deceive you, right? So, consider what Jesus says in John chapter 14. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Not some things, all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever... I have said unto you. Now remember this. Remember this is important. We need not that any man teach us. You don't need me to teach you. You have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God in you. And the Spirit of God will teach you. Ye need not that any man teach you. Right? You believe this, don't you? So when we get to here to Revelation 20, and it says, He laid hold, speaking of the angel, lays hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, contrary to what this guy said. It's not the devil or Satan. It's the devil and Satan. It's the same thing. Devil, it's not four different creatures here. All right, it's all one spirit absent of God. All right. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him. Okay, so now he's bound. When did this happen? Well, look at what was going on in the Old Testament. What was happening in the Old Testament? Well, let's see. There was God's people in the Old Testament wasn't there and God dwelt over them and consider Exodus 19 what's God say you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Right? So here is a great example. That the children of Israel was and is the holy nation of God. Outside of that holy nation are nations not of God. And if they are not of God, then they are of the devil, and therefore the devil has deceived them. And cast him into the bottom of the spit and should have 
shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. So clearly he was deceiving the nations. The nations. No more. Not the holy nation, but the nations outside of the holy nation of God. Make sense? I mean, you, you should know this because this is prevalent. This is, you know, very obvious. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on in the Old Testament and all it has to do with the nation of God and outside of that nation, outside of those people were the nations deceived. You should know that. It's pretty obvious. If you know anything at all about the Old Testament, you should know at least that much, shouldn't you? Because there's a lot of stuff that goes over the nation of God and the nations outside of God. Okay. There's a lot of stuff. I don't. You can't miss it, right? <laughs> it should be pretty obvious. So, really, I'll just one thing you have to believe the Bible you hold in your hands that it comes from God because it does and then once you believe you ought to be able to make the connections you ought to be able to see the Spirit of God is in you and the Spirit of God will bring into you all things will bring to your remembrance all things that has been taught to you all right that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years shall be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. So, well, how do you explain that? Well, it's pretty easy, isn't it? So here, for example, Exodus 19, we have the nation of God. Outside of that nation are nations of the devil, of Satan, if that helps. Right? Now... Satan is bound. Well, how's he bound? Well, what, you, you remember reading about Jesus? Right? You remember that? You remember when Jesus come? What, what did he do? You remember what, what Jesus did? Matthew 21 Therefore say I unto you the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Right? So we have the kingdom of God taken from not the children of Israel but from those Jews who obviously at that time they were uh, the leaders were uh, more powerful than what they thought right or they were not as powerful as what they thought let's put it that way um how do I say this here? So, here you have a situation where there's one group of people, and now Jesus comes along and makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him right now the kingdom of God is available everywhere in the world right whosoever believes in him now it's not just those people that claim to be the children of Abraham 
Now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes. So there is no longer one country of the people of God. Now the people of God is all over the world. And because there is no longer one country that has the kingdom of God, where at that time the kingdom of God was not with those outside of the country, now the kingdom of God is available all around the world. The borders are not there anymore. The wall has been brought down. The wall has been torn down. All right. So now Satan is bound because he doesn't have all these other nations all to himself. Right? So now he's bound. He's limited. He's shut up. Until the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. Now consider this. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, what happens? What happens? Do you remember what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? You should remember, right? The Spirit of God should be telling you what happens. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. To meet the Lord in the air. Alright, so who's up in the air with the Lord? All the those of all of us that are saved. Right? Consider what happens. What happens when hap when this event takes place? What happens? You, do you remember? You should remember, right? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We're going to go from corruptible to incorruptible. From mortal to immortal in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. This is what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We are separated from the unsaved. Right? Now th consider this. Th this is very important. If you want to understand Revelation 20, if you want to understand the Bible in general, this is very important to understand. So, all of us that are saved, we are lifted up in the air. And all the unsaved are down below at our feet right this goes all the way back to Genesis 3 when the Lord said to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and not shall bruise his heel his heel he's up in the air and he stomps his foot on the head of the serpent this was prophesied all throughout the Bible over and over over and over and over and over again all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation right so when we are up in the air it's kinda like what it was in the Old Testament before Jesus came along and said the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof they're making the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. Right? Before that, there was one country with borders. 
And inside that country was the kingdom of God. Outside of that kingdom were the nations deceived by Satan. Now, fast forward to the end of the world, we are lifted up. The kingdom of God is with us that are saved. And outside of us are nations deceived. Right? When the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Because the kingdom of God is no longer on the earth. It's up in the air. To meet the Lord in the air. The kingdom of God is in the air at this moment in time. Right? So, when this happens, we're up in the air. Then Satan is loosed again because the kingdom of God is not on the earth. And he shall go out to deceive the nations because the nation of God is up in the air. Which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. The number is as the sand of the sea. They're going to be gathered at our feet. Alright, consider this. Revelation 3, verse 9. Revelation 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. So we're going to be up in the air. And God is going to make them to come and worship before our feet. We're up in the air. We are up in the air. And our enemies gathered at our feet. Right? And they went up on the breath of the earth. And compassed the camp of the saints about. The, the beloved city. The beloved city is where? Where is the beloved city? The, the beloved city is new Jerusalem, right? Jerusalem is the beloved city. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Jerusalem is the holy city of God, the beloved city. The new Jerusalem is in heaven. Right? We read about this in Hebrews. Oops. Oh, I didn't do this right. Let me try this again. All right, in Galatians 4, Jerusalem, which is above. Right, so in Revelation 20, right, the beloved city, the camp of the saints and the beloved city. Where's the beloved city? It's above. Jerusalem, which is above, is free and the mother of us all, right? Jerusalem, the holy city of God, is above. And... Excuse me. And Jesus says in John chapter 14, In my Father's house, talking about above, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, talking about above. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Right? So he's going to prepare a place for and that place is the new Jerusalem, the holy city of God, which is above. Right? And so also are we lifted up at the end of the world. The camp of the saints and the beloved city is above. Oh, come on, man. Think And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. You think you're on the earth? It doesn't make sense. If... I wonder about people. I worry about people. This You can't look at this and say that you're down on the earth unless you're unsaved. Because fire comes down from God out of heaven onto the earth and devours them. There is no other possibility. We are up in the air. Right? Consider the parable of the wheat and the tares. Right? What happens? 
Well, the wheat are gathered into my barn. Right? Where is my barn? My barn is up in the air. And the tares are gathered at our feet. And they are put in bundles and burned. Fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. Same thing. We're being taught the same thing all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Alright, so when we're up in the air, fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. And the devil and everything wicked, everything evil in the world is thrown into the lake of fire and destroyed forever. Pretty simple stuff. This here, the great white throne, that's Jesus and him that sat upon it. In Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, we hear or we read about how when Jesus comes at the end of the world, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This is the same thing. It's the same thing. It's Don't let men confuse you. That's very important. Just believe these are the words from God because they are. All of this is perfectly um, corresponds perfectly with the rest of the Bible. There is no contradictions. There is no set aside prophecies that are separate from the rest of the Bible. This has to correspond with the entire Bible and it does. And I just showed it to you. And the Spirit of God, which is in you, should reveal it to you. Your only hang up, your only the only thing that's going to hang you up is if you do not believe these words come from God. Otherwise, you ought to be able to see it. And it's pretty simple. Right? It's pretty simple. And I'll leave on one verse here. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Right? Think about the Word of God. Think about the Word of God. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. 